Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Have a good time at the basketball game. Oh, I'm not going to a basketball game. I'm going to a debate. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Thanks, Mom. Billy! Bobby! See you on the train! Will you zip me up, Mom? Oh, sure. Hope you and Arthur have a nice time at the dance tonight. Oh, I'm not going with Arthur. I'm going with Greg. I thought Billy Joe was going with Greg. That was yesterday. Billy Joe traded me Greg for Arthur. <laughs> oh, good heavens! What's the matter? We forgot to tell Greg and Arthur we were switching. <laughs> Billy Joe! Billy Joe, did you tell Greg and Arthur? No, I thought you did. Oh, Mom, what'll we do? Well, it seems to me the simplest solution would be for you to go out with your original dates. Mom, if you can't help... Come on, Bobby Joe, maybe we can figure something out on the train. Bye, Goodbye, Goodbye, girls. Well, so long, Kate. Where are you off to? Sam Drucker's. And tonight I'm going to beat that cheating old box boy. I'm taking my own checkers. But, Joe, how can you accuse Sam of being dishonest? Last week I caught him using Mark checkers. <laughs> Good night, Uncle Joe. Enjoy yourself. Thanks, Kate. Well, looks like you and I have the whole hotel to ourselves. Sounds like Daisy Bell, the Miller's dog. <laughs> you too, huh? Well, don't keep your girlfriend waiting. And this time, young man, get in before daylight. <laughs> about me. Oh, my goodness, I forgot your dinner. Well, so long, Kate. I'm off to play tic-tac-toe with Sam Drucker. Yeah, but he beat you 99 out of 100 games last night. Yeah, but tonight we're using my chalk. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. All right, go to it. <laughs> well, I guess being in love is more important than food. <laughs> nice knife for knitting. Nothing like knitting under a full moon.
<laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Well, Kate, I did it. That Sam Drucker may slicker me at checkers and I'll tack my toe, but I outbowled him two games out of three. Well, nice you can beat him or something. I let him win the first game. Kind of felt sorry for him on account of his sprained thumb. <laughs> well, that was big of you. Well, Mom, you should have been at the track meet. Hooterville High won all the events except for the 100-yard dash. Well, anybody interested in a snack, there are cookies in the kitchen. Oh, oh thanks, boy. Mom. Thanks, girl. Oh, Bobby, before you misplace it, I'd like that charm bracelet back that you borrowed. Sure, a beautiful evening. Yes, lovely. You gotta get out of the rest. Here, Betty, you better take your charm bracelet back before I misplace it. Why don't you think I'm lonely, Uncle Joe? Well, you're sitting out here all by yourself. Well, the girls are dating and I'm gallivanting around with the boys. What are you driving at? What I'm driving at, it's a shame to waste that moon. Oh, Uncle Joe. Hey, you gotta get out of the rut and have yourself some fun. Don't worry about me. I am having plenty of fun. Oh, that shawl's dandy. But it can't tell you how pretty you are in it. Well, what I mean is, Kate, uh... I know what you mean, Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe is right. Yes, we've been awfully selfish. Yeah, what Ma needs is a companion. for the care and improvement of Cape Bradley will come to order. Hey, Billy, how come you're heading this meeting? Because I found the only decent gavel. <laughs> all right, all right, get on with the meeting. We're trying to figure out how to get Mom back into the land of the living by getting her together with an eligible bachelor. An eligible bachelor? For Mom? Look, infant, why do you think we're holding this meeting? Let's think. How do we introduce Mom to an eligible man? Well, she's met lots of eligible men, but that's as far as it went, because she still thinks of us as little children. Then it's simple. Which one of us is going in and tell her that we're grown up and she can get out of this dreary old rut? I second the motion, and it's unanimous. <laughs> My, what a beautiful stole. Thank you. That would attract any man. <laughs> Which reminds me, we girls have decided that we're old enough to take care of ourselves, and it's all right with us if you go out on dates. <laughs> I have another suggestion. <laughs> if it's not any better than your last suggestion, I suggest you forget the suggestion you're about to suggest. <laughs> the direct approach doesn't work with Mom. I say we trick her. Now, who's a nice, attractive, available man? Say, how about that new principal at school, Mr. Marshall? He's not married. Hey, great. I've seen him around town, and he's very distinguished looking. Why, if he were 20 years younger, I could go for him myself. <laughs> well, our troubles are over. He passes the Billy Joe Bradley test for men, and you can't go any higher than that. <laughs> OK, we've zeroed in on the right man. Now, how do we get him and Mom together? Nothing to it. Tomorrow, Mr. Marshall's going to send for her. For Mom? Why? To ask her about how that frog got in his lunchbox. What would a frog be doing in the principal's lunchbox? And why would he talk to Mom about it? <laughs> I second the motion. <laughs> you ever met? Go away. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> All right, Mom. Come back. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Betty Jo, this is the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me. Being called to meet with Mr. Quigley, the vice principal, because my daughter put a frog in his lunchbox. Mr. Quigley? Oh, but I put a... You were supposed to meet... <laughs> what happened to that nice, handsome Mr. Marshall? He's called out of town. And Mr. Quigley and I agreed that you are not to play baseball for a whole week. That'll be all, young lady. All right, the tricky approach didn't work. So now we've got to get sneaky. <laughs> Maybe we better forget the whole thing. Don't you even care about your own mother's happiness? 
Don't you want her to live a rich, full life? What kind of a daughter are you? I'm a rat. <laughs> but I can't help thinking we're going to be in big trouble if we keep mixing in. Betty Jo, Mom's whole future is at stake. It's too important to leave up to her. Girls, I got it. We're going to make Mom happy whether she likes it or not. This time, let's consult an expert. Come on. Oh. So we held a meeting to figure out how to get Mom acquainted with the new principal. So then Betty Jo made a motion that she put a frog in Mr. Marshall's lunchbox. And I went down to Scully Swamp and caught this big, fat frog and stuffed it in between his Swiss on rye and his liverwurst. <laughs> Only it wasn't Mr. Marshall's liverwurst, it was Mr. Quickly's. Well, no wonder it didn't work. A man who eats liverwurst is hopeless. <laughs> you don't understand. Mr. Quickly's a married man with five children. And Mr. Marshall is a bachelor, and such a nice one. Oh, well, darling, Mr. Marshall is not the only streetcar on the beach. <laughs> but Mrs. Douglas, there aren't that many bachelors in Hooterville. But there are a couple in Pixley. And Crowdwell Corners has a few. But that doesn't do us any good. All the eligible men are scattered all around. And with Mom taking care of the hotel, how do we get them all together? Well, darling, we do what we do in New York. We get a Lonely Hearts Club. A what? A Lonely Hearts Club, you know. Hearts? Hearts? <laughs> oh, hearts. Well, that's what I said. Hearts. <laughs> a Lonely Hearts Club is a good idea, Mrs. Douglas. But Mom would never go to one. Well, if we can't take the mall hill to the mountain, we take the mountain to the hotel. <laughs> Of course! Of course? <laughs> Shady Rest Lonely Hearts Club. We're delighted to have you. Girl! Let's show our new members to their rooms. Mr. Rambo is in five. Mr. Willoughby is in seven. And I'll show Mr. Thatcher to number nine. This way, gentlemen. Bellhops are that cute, then the women members must be out of this world. Just a minute, girls. You should have called me. I want these guests to have the best rooms in the hotel. Five, seven, and nine. That's what we gave them. Okay, I'll take them on up. I'm Joe Carson, the manager of this entire operation. You are? Well, then you're the fellow we want to talk to. Yeah, gents. What'll it be? Well, uh, when do the uh, activities start? Activity? Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh, we got an exciting checker game starting in the lobby at 8 o'clock. For those that are athletically inclined, we got a horseshoe game in the backyard at 9. Oh, uh, we mean, uh... <laughs> Soda's in the ice box. <laughs> Mr. Carson has quite a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess it takes a man with your kind of personality to s sort of get things warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Uncle Joe, we'd better get these gentlemen to the room so they can tidy up a bit. Yes, why don't you? Uh, Bobby, would you like to take Mr. Thatcher's bag upstairs? Uncle Joe, there's something you should know. Lonely heart. <laughs> now we've got three nice eligible men here at the hotel. All Mom has to do is take her pick. That's all she has to do, huh? Well, who's going to break the news to her? <laughs> oh, no. No, I won't. But, Uncle Joe, you started it. You said yourself Mom should have a companion. A companion, yes. 
but not those three rejects from the wax museum. <laughs> so long, I'm going into Pixley and order a new roof. But Uncle Joe, we don't need a new roof. We will when your mother finds out why those men are here. <laughs> business are those three new men in? Business? I think they're hunters. The season's closed. Not for what they're hunting. <laughs> Fine time for the girls to vanish. Just when we have three new guests in the hotel, I wonder where they skipped to. I guess they chickened out. I mean, it's a great chicken you come out with tonight, Kate. Oh, thank you. Uh, did you call the guests to dinner? Three times. Well, you get the gravy and I'll get the men down, huh? Mr. Rambo, dinner's ready. Ready? Aren't you hungry? Yep. Well, then why I'm aren't I'm waiting you? for the women. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby, dinner's ready. I'll wait till my dream girl gets here. Oh, are you expecting your wife? Hope it works out that way, Mrs. Bradley. <laughs> Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe? Yeah, Kate. Okay. What's going on in this hotel? Something going on? The girls have disappeared, and the men won't eat until the women get here. What women? Answer me. What have you been up to? I, I talked to Madam Chairman. <laughs> Madam Chairman! train out of here tonight, gentlemen. Yep. Uh, and like I explained to you at supper, due to the misunderstanding, there'll be no charge. And if you're expecting any women, you're going to be disappointed. I'm not disappointed. Me neither. I haven't had to take a pill since I ate that marvelous dinner. I think I've found the girl of my dreams. <laughs> and my girls tell me that the Lonely Hearts Club was your idea. Yes. Wasn't that clever of me? It was brilliant. <laughs> Here I am trying to run a hotel, and I'm right in the middle of a three-man tug of war. Only three? Well, don't worry. Some more will arrive tomorrow. <laughs> Mrs. Douglas, I, I know you're trying to help, but if you don't mind, when the time comes, I'll find my own man. I know you will, but but it's nice to have an assortment. <laughs> there, you see, I solved all your problems. You solved all my problems. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you're gonna solve my problem. And put down that pie. I'm putting it down as fast as I can, Kate. <laughs> we got three men in this hotel expecting to meet women. That's their problem. Their problem is our problem. Because you and the girls lured them here under false pretenses. The Shady Rest Hotel is not now nor ever will be a lonely arts club. What are you getting so all steamed up about? Because I don't want the hotel sued. Now, you get those men out of here without telling them why. Kate, you're, you're asking me to do the impossible. We gotta make them want to leave. I know. We'll toss a hat full of hornets in their rooms. <laughs> I think this is more practical. You know about these men. Now, tell me first about Mr. Rambo. What about him? Didn't he ever say what kind of woman he didn't like? Oh, yeah. The Gabby type. He can't stand him. Nice day, isn't it? Sorta. I'm so glad we're away from the others. <laughs> you know, 
Being a hotel manager, I try to be impartial to all my guests. But sometimes it's difficult because some men are just naturally more attractive to women than others. Especially the strong, silent type. And the strong, silent type man likes a silent type woman. And you will find that I am probably the most silent woman you ever saw. All my girlfriends say that I am the most silent person they know. They're all blabbermouths, but not me. I'm silent. And I think that's why we are mutually attracted, because you're silent and I'm silent. How would you like to go for a nice silent walk? Excuse me, uh, I think I'll go pack. <laughs> About Mr. Willoughby. Willoughby? A hypomaniac playing the organ? <laughs> Katie, he's got so many pills in him, he rattles when he walks. What doesn't he like? He doesn't like to hear about other people's aches and pains. Oh? <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, not too bad. Except for this pain in I my hip. I feel awful. Mrs. Bradley, those are for the pain in my hip. I got pains all over. Hip, knees, elbow, ankles. But that may not be the right pill. Don't give it a second thought. Wherever this pill goes, there'll be a pain waiting for it. <laughs> oh, there, there, there it goes now. Oh, oh your knee hurts? Oh. Well, I had a pain in my knee. You once. think you had a pain? This knee goes out of kilter if I so much as pass a drugstore. <laughs> well, speaking of pain. I gotta sit down. <laughs> Did I tell you that I had my appendix taken out three times? <laughs> the first time, the doctor couldn't find it. And the second time, he found it, and it had wiggled its way behind my pancreas. <laughs> so the third time, the doctor took the scalpel. Mrs. Out. Brad, you may be a good cook, but I could never seriously consider spending the rest of my life with somebody who does nothing but complain. <laughs> One to go. Yeah. Now, this guy Thatcher told me that his idea of paradise was to sleep until 11 o'clock every day. Oh-ho. Now I know just what to do in the morning. <laughs> he ain't rising, Kate. Give him some more encouragement. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Just the regular Kate Bradley health routine. <laughs> okay, Mr. Thatcher, now for some calisthenics. Now, as a starter, we'll touch the toes 50 times without bending the knees, and then segue into 40 push-ups. Not me. I'm going to get back into that bed. And when I wake up at a decent hour, I'm going to get out of this boot camp. <laughs> the meeting is called to order. Are there any motions before the house? Madam Chairman, I make a motion that we bust up this committee and stay out of Mom's life. And tend to our homework. I second the motion. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.